The foregoing, we now turn to the nature of the conservative orders in this matter. It is widely accepted that the purpose of conservatory orders is to preserve the status quo pending further orders of this court. <coughs> the Supreme Court in Gatirao, Peter Munia, and Dixon, Mwanda, with Indian two others say as much. In this case, maintaining the status quo would mean, one, that the first petitioner remains impeached under Article 145, sub-Article 7, which affirms the finality of the impeachment process with the following provision, I quote, if at least two-thirds of all members of Senate vote to uphold an impeachment charge, the Deputy President shall cease to hold office, end of quote. Two, additionally, the prevailing status quo will mean that the Deputy President nominee, Professor Abraham Kuture Kindeki, does not assume office. With such an approach, while such an approach may seem fair, reasonable, and balanced, and one which this court would ordinarily be inclined to adopt, the unique nature of the Deputy President rule under the 2010 Constitution suggests a different course. Allowing these orders to stand will leave the office of the Deputy President vacant. The problem, however, is that no other person is authorized to carry out the constitutional functions specifically assigned to the Deputy President under Article 147, sub Article 2 once those assigned by the president revert to the president in the absence of an office holder. The result would be a de facto suspension of Article 147.2 of the Constitution, an outcome that no court should knowingly permit. For clarity, this court firmly holds that no court should issue orders that have the effect of suspending the operation of any provision of the Constitution, such as such an outcome is clearly not envisioned by the document itself. The Constitution was not handed to Kenyans on a silver platter, no. It was achieved through great struggle and sacrifice. Therefore, it is the duty of the court to uphold its provisions as intended by the framers and as demanded by the people of Kenya. Furthermore, Article 259 of the Constitution mandates, the document, mandates that the document must be interpreted as always speaking. This means the Constitution is a living document designed to address contemporary challenges and to be applied consistently and continuously without interruption. Suspending any provision of the Constitution, even temporarily, will undermine this principle by creating gaps in its operation and disrupting the intended balance of governance. The Constitution is structured to ensure that all its provisions are effective and operative at all times. If any provision, such as Article 147, sub Article 2, is rendered dormant by a judicial order, it risks setting a precedent where parts of the Constitution could be selectively switched off, effectively weakening the Constitution's authority and the protections it affords. Additionally, we are mindful that courts are guided by the principle of constitutional supremacy, which requires that all judicial decisions align with the Constitution's objective and upholds its integrity. Issuing an order that suspends a constitutional provision would directly contravene this principle, effectively placing judicial discretion above the supreme law of the land. This will be inconsistent with the spirit of judicial restraint and the court's role as a protector and not a modifier of the Constitution. For these reasons, we take the position that the Constitution must remain fully operational at all times, and no court order should have the effect of rendering any part of it inoperative or dormant. The court's responsibility is to interpret and apply the Constitution as a cohesive functional document that serves the people's enduring will and protects the structure of governance as established. Drawing from the above, we hereby find and hold that public interest in this matter 
favors giving way to the Constitution, which in any event is the will of the people. That is also the dictate under Article 3 of the Constitution, where every person has an obligation to respect, uphold, and defend the Constitution. We choose to abide by that calling. As such, public interest demands that the office of the Deputy President should not remain vacant. Whether the consolidated petitions will be rendered negatory in the absence of any orders. As we stated in ruling number one, because the consolidated petitions challenge the entire impeachment process, the fundamental issues at stake remain live, even though the parliamentary proceedings have been completed. Furthermore, as previously noted, should any of these petitions succeed, this court will have no shortage of effective remedies to address the situation. The next issue is whether the applicants will be prejudiced if the orders are not granted. Regarding whether the applicants will suffer any harm if the conservatory orders are not granted, we find that no individual can suffer loss or damage when the constitution is permitted to operate as intended. Allowing the constitutional process to unfold does not in itself result in detriment as it upholds the rule of law and respects the framework agreed upon the people. The applicants also urge the court to grant the conservatory orders, expressing concern that the respondents have a history of disobeying court orders, and that once the office of the deputy president is filled, it will be impossible to remove the appointee, even if the petitions were successful. However, this court takes the view that it cannot operate under the assumption that its orders will be disregarded. This country has legal mechanisms to address any acts of disobedience of court orders. Moreover, the Honorable Attorney General through Senior Learned Counsel Professor Geto Mugai has underta given undertaking to comply fully with any orders which would be issued by this court in this matter. As such, we find that the applicants do not stand to suffer any prejudice in the event the conservatory orders are not granted. This position, as we conclude, we that this matter holds significant public interest and we remain committed to an expeditious examination of the petitions. Therefore, we will further provide directions within this ruling. Consequently, the following orders are hereby issued. One, the applications for conservatory, for conservatory orders are hereby disallowed. Two, the conservatory orders issued on 18th of October 2024 in Keregoya High Court E015-2024 are hereby discharged and all set aside. Cause of this application shall be in course. We grant leave for appeal, type proceedings and certified copies of this ruling to be availed to parties at cost or as it may be. We will mention this matter on 7th of November 2024 at 2 p.m. in the open court. This ruling shall forthwith be uploaded in the court tracking system. That is the